Imagine a blueprint, a step-by-step -step guide, a challenge where I peel back the curtains and show you exactly what it takes to sell print-on-demand on Etsy. Welcome to the Print-on-Demand Million Dollar Challenge. Welcome to episode four. It's crazy that we're already four days into the challenge and we've done so much. At this point, we've created our Etsy account, our Printify account, and connected the two. That was episode number one. We did our product research where we found four different products that we want to sell on our Etsy account. That was episode two. We did our market research where we created our master list and determined what we need to do on a design level and on a listing level to have success with those products in the market today. That was episode number three. Now we're on episode number four, where today we're gonna to go over listing templates, exactly what it takes on a listing level to convert the most amount of shoppers into paying customers. Do you feel that you need to create a brand in order to sell print on demand on Etsy? I don't think it's required to build a brand to sell print on demand on Etsy, by any means. Uh, it's, it, Etsy is a, a platform, it's a marketplace, right? People actually search for the thing that they're looking for and they find the thing that they're looking for and they usually buy the thing that they wanted to buy. I know many sellers, personally, as friends, that do 500,000 a year on Etsy and they don't even have a brand. They sell lots of different types of products to different types of audiences. People like the products, not necessarily the brand. They're going to the shop just for the products themselves, so. No, not at all. This is actually one of the great things about Etsy. Uh, uh, the easiest example I can give is think about when you go on Amazon and you buy just like some little thing that you need. When you buy it, you don't really go into the stores, like seller history and see what else they're selling. You kind of just look at the item, see if it's what you need, see if maybe if the reviews are good and you buy it. Same exact thing on Etsy. I think the whole idea of selling on Etsy is that you're creating products that the user actually wants, something unique that they can't find somewhere else. And it's not so much about the brand name behind it. It's more about connecting with the user's interest with the, with the person and everything they actually desire from that product. Overall building an actual brand, I don't think is quite as important on Etsy. And so I really think the best move on Etsy is to build a general store where you sell lots of different niches and even potentially lots of different types of products all within one store. I have a big, bold answer of no. <laughs> the basis of, of how your business should be built is on search volume. So search volume trumps brand all day long on Etsy because you want to leverage search volume. That is the name of the game and that is how you will win if you're building off a search volume and not trying to brand or niche down to a specific topic. It's not really necessarily about the brand, but it's just providing something that the customer is already looking for. Selling on a third party marketplace like Etsy is a little bit different than selling on a website or selling at a craft show or a trade show in that on a website, you control the traffic that comes in. You control the brand. On Etsy, you're surrounded with competition above you, below you, on the sides of you. At a trade show or in person, like people can touch, they can feel, they can try on the product. On Etsy, they can't. So the way that you, you craft your listing, the way that you present your product on Etsy, you have to keep all of that in mind. You have to know that you're fighting for the same shopper that all of your competition is fighting for. You have to know that your shoppers can't touch the product, can't feel the product, can't try the product before buying. And you have to be able to portray the product in a way that justifies them literally pulling out their wallet and giving you money. So the way that you do that is a little unique and that's exactly what we're gonna go over in this video. One thing that I recommend that you guys actually go and do, and when this clicked for me, this helped a lot, is to go over to Etsy and buy something. Put yourself in the shoes of your shoppers. For example, go to Etsy and type in mom shirt and then you're gonna get a hundred results. As you're, as you're going through the results, why did you click onto this listing and not this listing? Why did you click on this listing and not the 99 above and the 99 listings below it? There was a 1% chance that you clicked on this listing. What made the difference? Once you're on the listing, what are you looking at? Are you looking at the titles and the description or are you only looking at the images and the price points? Did you convert or did you bounce? When you converted and you got to the checkout page, what are you looking at? Are you looking at the lead times, the shippings, that you're $8 away from free shipping? Or did you just enter in your card information and checked out? Or did you bounce? Post-purchase, did you leave a review? If so, why? If not, why not? So that's essentially the buyer's journey. Every step that the buyer goes through, every single time that you get a sale on Etsy. So if you can optimize every single step in that buyer's journey and remove as much friction as possible, you're gonna have a sales machine. So that's kind of what I do is I start at the very top, 
right? Someone goes to Etsy, they type in mom shirt, they see a hundred results. What do we do? How can I make my listing, my thumbnail stand out from the competition? So I'm gonna walk you through exactly what I do. All right, so let's put ourselves in the shoes of the shopper. Let's say that the shopper is coming to Etsy to look for a traditional mom shirt. We are selling apparel and we will be selling mom shirts. So these will be our competitors. And before anyone clicks into our listing, they have the opportunity of seeing all of your competition. You're somewhere in the mix, somewhere in the sea of other people selling the same product and the same design. How are we gonna get the shopper from to stop scrolling and to click on your listing when there's so much similarity all around you? This is like, if you can crack this code, you'll get more clicks. And the more clicks you get, the more conversions you have, the more conversions you have, the more sales you have. Like this is the first thing that we have to crack the code in order to get sales on our shop. So the way that I do this is there's only a few things that we can optimize to help for click through, right? We're only allowed to edit the image, the title, the price point, and whether or not there's maybe free shipping or a sale. There's a few things that we cannot control. For example, how many reviews we have, or if we have star seller ratings. So of the things that we can control, I have found that the biggest lever that you can pull is this image, right? When you're scrolling, you're not trying to read the titles. When you're scrolling, you can't read the price points or the sales. Like when you're scrolling, you're looking at the images, right? So that's the first thing that we have to try to crack the code on is our main image. This is probably the most important step in your, in essentially in creating your listing template is your main image. So the way that I do this is, Again, I come to this main search term, you know, a generic search term for our product, like a mom shirt. And I start scrolling down and I'm seeing like, what is grabbing my attention and what is kind of just slipping through the cracks. And just kind of going through this with you guys, what's grabbing my attention more than others, and you might be thinking the same thing as I'm doing this, is whenever I'm seeing a model, right? Like we are social beings. Like when I'm seeing like a face or a smile, I'm kind of gravitating more towards this listing than this one right here. This one looks kind of flat and plain and like uninviting, you know, no offense to these at all. But like, as I'm scrolling, I'm just naturally being drawn more towards these model shots for apparel. And as I'm scrolling too, I am seeing that the ones where the model is kind of like doing something with their hands, um, that is kind of like as if they're about to say something or they're, they're in the middle of a conversation, like like her hand is up or or her, or her elbow is kind of bent there, does kind of stand out a little bit more than when the model's hands are at her side. Again, this is just my personal preference. I'm just literally explaining to you what I'm feeling as I'm going through this. And like, if I'm doing this as I am doing it, my process, right? So again, like this one is popping out to me more than maybe this one. This one is popping out to me a little bit, maybe a little bit more than this one. I don't know, but compared to these two, very similar designs, very similar color palettes. But of the two, this one is kind of grabbing my attention a little bit more because you have a fraction of a second to grab their attention. And I think that this design is grabbing my attention more than this design. So for our main image, when we go into our, our images, now I know, hey, I'm gonna have a model shot instead of a lay down shot. And I'm gonna have a model where her hands are kind of doing something to act more inviting. And maybe the person might be smiling to, you know, like, hey, like, click on my listing. It's inviting, if that makes sense. So that's one thing that we're gonna do uh, to help our click through. The next thing that I notice is that, hey, this shirt is $27 and this shirt is $11. Why is this shirt half the cost of this shirt, right? And the way that they're doing this is it's called a display price. Etsy displays your cheapest variant um, at the click through level. So this is why display prices are so powerful is that you can have one SKU, maybe your extra small pink be $9.99 in order for it to display below $10, but you can have every other size be more. So for example, $10.78, but I would say the average price is $17 to, yeah, 16 to $17. So again, that lower display price will also help um, your click through. And the last thing that I like to add is a daily flash sale. You see how this has this nice big green thing that says sale ends in 11 hours. So if I'm scrolling through and I'm seeing, you know, a display price of $10 and the sale ends in 11 hours, I might click onto this one before I click onto this one just for the saving aspects. So if you can couple those two things together, right? A low display price, a daily flash sale, 
and an inviting thumbnail, you, you got three out of three and you will get more click through than the competition. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to a sample listing that I created right here. So this is our shop, right? We have no products yet. We just got done doing our market research. I literally just before coming into the studio today, created some of our um, template images uh, to show you guys in this video. So this is the image that I created right here. So for example, I have the model that we talked about. Um, in the previous episode, we decided that we want our most of our graphics to be color based, right? Nice, vibrant colored graphics. So I decided that I wanted the shirt color to be on her to be a nice neutral color to allow those colors to kind of pop more than if this shirt was maybe mauve or maroon or even black. So I gave her this nice soft cream color shirt. That way when we do put the graphics on it, those graphics do pop. I made it so her arms are doing that nice little like motion like she's about to say something. I included part of her mouth so it looks a little bit more inviting friendly. And then I also put in some text on the main image. Anything that you can put on this main image to let them know that, hey, you might have variations, you might have different sizes, different colors, anything that might intrigue curiosity to just click on your listing, it helps. So I put some text over here on the bottom left that says pick from six sizes and 10 colors. I have that display price that we talked about below $10, $9.99. And I think this is a nice starting point for uh, you know this product category apparel. So once somebody clicks onto your listing, I'm gonna kind of walk through like what I think most shoppers do. I think most shoppers instantly go over to your images and they start to review your images over here. Then they look at the price point. And then if both of those are in line with what they want, they will go through the process of adding it to cart. Again, go through the variations and then add to cart. Like I think most of what happens on this listing, you see right here on my screen. I think very little of the time do they come down and they read your reviews. Some people do. And I think very little of, of the time do they come down here and read the description. Again, Etsy actually hides the description. That's how very little people actually read it is they actually bury the description, making it harder to find. So essentially you really just wanna optimize what you see in my screen right here, where people are gonna look at your images, they're gonna look at the price point, and then they're gonna to go to the variations to try to you know, go through the transaction process. So in terms of the order of operation of my images, I have my main image, which is our thumbnail. The very next set of images are my how to order images because I know that once they like the product, the next thing that they're gonna do is they're gonna come over here to try to go through like my colors over here. So they're gonna need a color chart to be able to go through this variation here. The very next thing they're gonna do is go to the next variation size. So the next image is my sizing chart. The one thing that I noticed with a lot of people doing apparel is they had like seven images and the sizing chart and the color chart were at the very bottom. You had to go through five different images to just get to your how to order images and I think that actually causes friction in the buyer's process. They need this information to, to do this variation here. They need this information to do this part here, but they have to go way down here at the very bottom, like as if it's not important to be able to buy your product. So I have my main image be my thumbnail. The very next batch of images are my how to order images. Again, these are all working images. Uh, again, there's no graphic on this one. As you can see, I actually don't have, uh, I need to color match all of these to be the correct colors. They're more placeholders for right now. The next thing that I make sure that I include with my how to images are any questions that I think the shopper is gonna ask. Like when they get to this step, like the color chart, to add the color to their cart, what questions do I think they might ask themselves? Uh, for example, like, is this 100% cotton or does this have nylon or is this, does this have polyester? Like, what is the, the thread compound for this shirt, for this color? So I made sure to include uh, for the colors that I offer, what thread counts are in each color. So I think that just might be a question that they ask. If not, it doesn't hurt to have it here. And if it does, again, we're just removing any friction, any questions that they might have, being that they can't talk to you in person, being that they can't feel, touch, or read the label in person. When I got down to the sizing chart, uh, one question I thought they might ask is like, what shirt is this? Is this a Bella Canvas or is this a Gildan? What brand shirt is this? So I made sure to include Bella Canvas 3001 on my sizing chart so if they ask that question I have the answer here essentially wherever you think there might be a question you should have an answer uh, the next question I thought they might be asking is what's the fit like is this a woman's fit is this a jersey fit is it a relaxed fit uh, a Bella canvas 301 is a unisex sizing so that is the, the sizing for this product so I also made sure to include that on my sizing chart 
The very next image that I include, and I, and I do the same exact flow in this order for all my products I sell my personal business, and I promise it helps so much. The very next image that I include is a social proof image, right? People don't like being the first person to buy. They like knowing that other people are buying it and other people are happy with this product. So I do the top, either the top two thirds or the bottom two thirds of the image is like a lifestyle shot where someone's happy they have the product. And then I do like a review. In this case, it's a fake review. I told my wife to say this and therefore it's not a lie, but I put five stars and I wrote, I absolutely love this shirt. The material is soft, the graphic is crisp and it arrived just in time when I needed it. And then I put in quotes, I love this shirt. So it's this is a social proof lifestyle hybrid image. Uh, so this is the very next image that I do. And again, the graphic will go right here depending on the listing. The next image that I do is a feature or benefits image. Uh, this image is definitely working progress, but essentially it's like only the best. You deserve the best. Our custom tees are made with premium blends uh, for that soft feel and that vibrant graphic. And I have some arrows pointing to the shirt where it's like super soft, crisp graphic, true fit design, eco-friendly process. So these are some features of the product. And the reason why you want to have like a, a feature image and or a benefit image is some people buy for the features. Like, is that shoe size nine and a half? Is it color black? Like they need to know the features to make that decision. And some people buy from benefits. Like does that shoe have an increased arc in the back for, for my lower back pain, right? So having features and benefits as one of your image will help your conversion rate. The very last image that I like to include is a guarantee. Like uh, this might be like a 100% satisfaction guarantee or what I like to call it is a love it guarantee. Where essentially like we are 100% committed to making you happy. If you're not absolutely in love with your shirt, just let us know and we'll refund your uh, order right away, smiley face, right? So it's like if someone's getting down to this last image, they had the time to go through all of this and they get down to that very last image, maybe they're still on the fence. Maybe, maybe they don't quite want it, but by putting this guarantee in here, you let them know, hey, just buy the shirt. And if you're not happy, no questions asked, no harm, no foul. We'll give you a full refund, not a problem. So that is the order of operations for our images. Coming over to um, the right hand side of our listing, we definitely leverage a lower display price. This, this helped with the click through. So it looks like it's $9.99. But if you come over to our sizing, it is $9.99 for just our extra small. Uh, I think I made an extra small pink. So this, is probably, this will probably be our lowest selling variant. Therefore, it's okay that we're not yielding a profit on that, but we are profitable at everything else. Uh, you might notice the pricing of $17.49. So every other size and every other, other color is $17.49. So on Etsy, most Etsy shops allow free shipping when it's $35 or more. So if somebody buys two shirts, it's gonna be $34.98, which makes them have to buy three shirts in order to get that free shipping. So essentially this is the most optimal pricing that I've found to work for products that you wanna price below 20 bucks. If you can price it for below 20 bucks, you will make more money uh, at this price point than you will at $19.99 because less people will get that free shipping. Um, so I definitely recommend selling, uh, if you're doing apparel at that 1749, that's kind of the magic number. Coming over to our title, I'm very strategic with the title as well. So I've talked to a few different reps at Etsy, but essentially they weigh the first four words of your title with the most weight. So you want the first four words in your title to be the most important things that you want to rank for. So most of the people selling apparel, I noticed that they put, they just quoted whatever was on the shirt as the first part of the title. But I, when someone goes to Etsy, 90 out of 100 people, nine out of 10 people probably are looking for what they want. They don't know what they already want. They probably don't know that they want a shirt that says, you know, Nina is a name, spoiling is the game. They're, all they know is they want a Nina gift, a Nina shirt, and then they see that shirt, and like, oh, that's cute, I like that, and they buy it. So at the very beginning of the title, I tend to put what I find to be the most relevant. Like if I showed up for this, I'm hyper relevant, therefore my conversion rate should be most optimal. In terms of the layout of the title, you can see that I use commas. I don't use the bars and I don't use the dashes. Uh, because if you do like, you know, miss shirt, space, bar, space, that bar counts as one of your four words and you just wasted 25% of your top four words. So you definitely wanna use commas that way, like in my first four words, I have miss shirt, personalized gift. 
So like it could be Miss Shirt Gift, Personalized Miss Shirt, uh, Personalized Gift. So there's a lot of different combinations that you can get with those first four words. So you, so you really wanna be strategic with the first four words, more so than the rest of the title. Uh, from there, I almost just plug in what I would use for my tags. So I do find that like if the keyword or the search term is found in your title and your tags, you do rank better if it's found in just your title or just your tags. So I do try to put my tags in my title. So you might ask yourself like, where do you get the information to put in your title and for your tags? So the way that I do this is it's actually pretty easy. So again, we're pulling from our master list, right? So if the, one of the very top, like if we are creating this design right here, let me go into this listing really quick, is I actually don't use the title and the tags that they're using because at the very bottom of this listing, Etsy practically gives you what they want. Right here, explore more related searches wife, bride gifts, wife sweatshirt, miss shirt, engagement gift, gift for bride, future Mrs. shirt, personalized Mrs. And these all have enough characters to be tags, right? So it's like these are related searches for a product that is doing very well. I would only pull this information from a listing that is optimized because if it's a non-optimized listing, these might be unoptimized related searches. But if they made the top of your master list and the product is selling at that volume, these are golden nuggets for tags and these are golden nuggets for um, your title. So essentially, I just grabbed all of this information here, put commas between it, and that was the rest of my title. And I think there's 11 total. Uh, and that was 11 of my 13 tags. So I wouldn't overthink titles. I don't overthink tags. I just find a, a listing that is relevant to what I'm creating, scroll down to the bottom, and I pull what Etsy gives me. So let's go back over to our listing really quick. At this point, we've gone through the images. We've gone through our pricing. We've gone through our title. Again, I mentioned I wouldn't spend too much time on the description. Etsy is now indexing the very beginning of your description. So maybe salt and pepper, a few keywords here, like looking for the perfect, you know, maybe put a keyword here, shirt, our custom keyword here, shirt. So you can salt and pepper that first, maybe a uh, paragraph of your description with some, with some search terms. But again, knowing that all this information is gonna be reflected onto your images. And again, 90 out of 100 people are not reading it. So I wouldn't spend too much time on your description. Scrolling down to the shipping cost. I personally am a huge believer in charging shipping and not a fan in offering free shipping. So I know that Etsy says that you can have some boost in rank if you offer free shipping, but I've actually found that if you offer free shipping, you have to have a more expensive front end price to allocate the shipping as part of that one price. Again, going back to click through, right? If someone sees your listing and your price says $30 because it's including shipping, they're not gonna click into your listing to know that that, hey, it's because you offer free shipping. You want your front end price to be as cheap as possible. So therefore you wanna push as much of that price onto your shipping as possible. And I've personally tested free shipping. Uh, I think I've tested free shipping, $299, $399, $499, all the way up to $699. Um, on numerous products, different categories, different parts of the year. And I've gone up to 699 and I saw zero difference in conversion rate. So this is nice because I think Printify only charges us $4.75 for shipping, but we're gonna charge $6.99 for shipping and it's not gonna hurt our conversion rate at all. We're actually making a, a little over a dollar margin on our shipping. All right, well, that's it for this episode. I hope I did a good job and I hope that made sense in regards to what we need to focus on on the listing level, knowing the journey that the shoppers will be taking to buy your product. And again, I highly recommend you guys do that yourself. Put yourself in the shopper's shoe. Ask yourself the questions that you think that they're asking and that'll only help you guys do a better job when creating your listings for your products. In the next episode, I'm gonna share with you something that's gonna completely disrupt how print on demand is done on Etsy. Stay tuned for episode five.